Greetings, grammar lovers, all four or five of you. To this point in this series of videos, I talked about the word that. I talked about its five grammatical word functions. You could say it functions as five different sentence elements. I talked about that repeatedly. Okay. I talked about that noun clauses as sentence functions. There are six, in my view, in my perspective. We talked about that repeatedly. I gave examples of that noun clauses in those applications. There's three. And there's three more. Those are example sentences. I discussed each function in detail, subject, direct object, subject complement. I discussed these in great detail. Um, adjective complement, that's a tricky one, which we'll discuss shortly. We'll go over that. Really tricky. It's a weird one. Then in videos 13a, 13b, and 13c, I discussed at length the two other <clears throat> sentence functions of the that noun clause, noun complement and a positive. I made that pretty clear. All right. Then I got to this. This is why I'm making this video today. I got to this page of notes. This is the most critical one. Here we see the six example sentence I I just showed the example sentences, right? Down here, we see the words and the thoughts that we actually think when we speak these sentences, okay? We actually say, for example, the trait that he lives to serve is honorable. In other words, in our mind, we're thinking the trait or the quality that he lives to serve. But when we speak, okay, we abridge it and we just say, that he lives to serve as honorable. Okay, I talked about that, but this is very important. This, this paper is important because we notice something here. Okay, we, we discover something, which I, I don't know, know of anyone else on the internet or in any grammar books talking about this. A that noun clause, one, a that non, noun clause will reference a noun or a pronoun. Okay, it'll reference a noun or a pronoun. The reference will be openly given obvious right there, okay, written, you can read it, or it can be assumed or implied. And the reference will be anaphoric, that is, it will, re will refer backward, okay? In other words, we look at our note paper, our critical note paper, and we see the trait that he lives to serve. You see your noun and your noun complement. I heard the claim that he lives to serve. You see your noun and noun complement. And here you see your pronoun with your noun clause. And that's because you have punctuation here. Okay, you don't yet have the word that. When you think this through in the brain, it'll come out with, with the word that in it. Okay, um, and then you see your noun, noun complement, noun, noun complement. And then here your noun and a positive. The positive is structurally identical to the noun complement but it has the comma before it and the comma after it. And that's what lets you know that it's just slightly different, just a slightly different function, okay? Now, we did that, and we also discovered that a that noun clause cannot be the object of a preposition. It can't function as the object of a preposition, but it can be part of a prepositional phrase, okay? You heard it here first. I am delighted, and you see that he lives to serve. Okay? But down here, in the, in the deep structure, when we talk about this, before we speak it, we say, I am delighted by the fact that he lives to serve. In other words, the complete thought in the brain is, I am delighted by the fact that he lives to serve. So you see in that prepositional phrase there, that the that noun clause can be part of that prepositional phrase, okay? And then 
no matter how you look at it, and this is the truly weird part, the, the, that noun clause, okay, even if it's used as an adjective complement, its effect is still going to be adverbial. Because why? In these sentences, no matter which one you choose, you ask, well, why am I delighted? For what reason am I delighted? For what reason am I delighted? So the whole mood here of this setup, even if you use this version or the deep version with the noun and the noun complement, is adverbial. It has an adverbial feel. You can study that on your own. It's a beautiful thing. And then finally we have, when I did the, a few vid videos a few um, days ago, I mentioned that the adjective complement is tricky. The, the way it's the way it's viewed in contemporary grammar is tricky, uh, and its function is tricky. But I want to sh show you why I say that. You see, when I started this series, I mentioned repeatedly that the na that noun clause. Okay, it will have six sentence functions, all right? I said that. This is this is perspective A, let's call it. This is my my version, all right? In my grammar mind. Have six different functions, all right? But if you read grammar books and go go on the internet and you search and you research, you would discover that there's a B perspective. It's a little different. And they will tell you that the that noun clause has only five functions. Subject, direct object, a positive, subject complement, and noun complement. And where they part part with me, where they where they differ is they say, okay, we have the function of subject complement, and that is subdivided into predicate adjective and predicate nominative. In other words, they're saying that the subject complement is the function, but Instead of using the term adjective complement, okay, all right, adjective complement, they say, they use the old term predicate adjective or predicate nominative. In other words, that complement can be one of two things. So let me just stop there and, and go into that. Okay, when you look at it the way I've been showing you in videos, I call it a function of adjective complement, all right? And, oops, earthquake. I am delighted that he lives to serve, and we know in the deeper structure in the mind, you're actually saying, I am delighted by the fact that he lives to serve, or you're saying something very similar, okay? We discussed that repeatedly. Now, when you do that, you have steps in, the, in, in, in analysis and in research. When you look into it, you have steps that you take and you discover that you have a subject and a predicate. Then you discover that you have a subject, verb, adjective, and adjective complement. In this case, okay, the prepositional phrase, by the fact that he lives to serve, that is a qualified structure that functions as an adjective complement, okay? So then you see you have, um, in your third step of analysis, you have subject, verb, adjective, preposition, object of a preposition, which is a noun, and a noun complement, okay? You see here, when you look at this thoroughly, you get to that third level of analysis. You see that you have a noun complement in there. And that was the whole point of showing you this paper about how the noun complement in the deep structure keeps popping up. It just keeps coming up. The noun complement is trying to tell you in this study of that noun clauses that it's critical. Without it, you almost can't, you can't grammatically fathom this noun clause concept without it. Now, let's say you take perspective B, okay? Perspective B, which is common out there on the internet. It's, it's a little bit more modern, a little bit more uh, contemporary, okay? Let's say you look at that. 
perspective, all right? If you do that, then you would say we're dealing with a predicate adjective, which is one form of subject complement, okay? Then you have your, your basic sentence that we started out with. So when you analyze it step by step, you have subject predicate, or I hope I'm speaking correctly. Second step reveals that you have subject verb and a predicate adjective, which again is one, just one form of subject complement. Then on your third step of analysis, you have subject verb adjective, adjective complement, which is a that noun clause. And in this, and in this, way of looking at the sentence, this perspective, okay, this more slightly newer approach, you have no noun complement element. You have no noun complement feature. In other words, on this very critical note page of our study, this is where we culminated. With my perspective, you see the noun complement or noun clause prominence. If you analyze and study the sentences from the, the B perspective, okay, this one here, you will not be able to get to the down complement component. And not only that, but if you look at the difference with my perspective A, you get to the crux or heart of the matter, your adjective complement on your second step of analysis. If you do it the, the newer way, the more descriptive way, this is more prescriptive, this is more descriptive, it takes you three steps. You, you don't get to the adjective complement feature until you're in your third step of analysis. This is critical in this study. Very few people will watch this video, but this is critical. This is a beautiful study and I've discovered something which, again, I show on this note page. Here's the sample sentences we started out many videos ago. We figured it into mind. We actually think and, and see and, and, and hear something more like this, more complete. There's a fullness, a unity. And what you find out is there's a common thread here. It's the noun complement or the noun complements close sister, cousin, whatever you want to call it, noun clause or a positive. They're all very much related, all very much related. And I know of no other studies that go into this and present it this way. And I'm pleased with that. Um, getting, getting all the way back to the, the start of this study, I claimed this function for the word that, I changed the name of that to pro form adverb. I kept demonstrative pronoun. That's a good name. Might as well keep it. Works. I changed the name. It's not a relative um, pronoun. It's a distinction indicator. I make that perfectly clear. This is this is probably some of my best grammatical work here. And then noun clause indicator, and not all those other goofy terms that people use that are inaccurate and kind of don't make sense. And that's it. Thank you for being incredibly patient. And um, I think that's it for now. You never know. So thank you again and good night.